My name is Marik Neri. I am an, um, a member of the Computing Society of the Philippines, as well as uh, an associate professor at the Institute of Mathematics in UP Diliman. I welcome you to the 10th lecture in the CSP COVID webinar series provided by the Computing Society of the Philippines in cooperation with the UP Diliman Department of Computer Science. So for today, our webinar speaker is an associate professor of computer science at the UP Diliman. She is also an applied mathematician currently busy modeling COVID-19 and offering a public service to local government units. In her old normal life, she was, very, she was busy supervising graduate students who study submarine mass failures and the tsunamis they can generate by using cellular aut automata for the mass failure and classical CFD for the tsunami. They also conducted studies on the fate and transport of agropollutants and their role in lake eutrophication in Lake Buhi, Camarines Sur. With undergraduate students, her poster on a storm surge early warning system was awarded best poster for interdisciplinary geosciences at the AOGS 2019 in Singapore. Singapore. Her continuing activities involve data collection and analysis for the SDG target interactions, studies for seagrass modeling the effects of dissolved nitrogen on a seagrass meadow in Bolinao, Pangasinan. Currently, she explores a new topic on the diffusion of carbon dioxide as a proxy for a fire, for a fire spread. That is a model for the spread of fire is done by studying the diffusion of CO2 gas. To speak on age stratification, quarantine and nonlinear infection rates, modifications to the classic SEIR model, let us welcome Dr. Vena Pearl Bongola. Thank you, Marek. Am I uh, coming uh, across clear? Yes, ma'am. Ah, thank you. All right, so what we will discuss today uh, is work I do with, uh, well, my former graduate student, uh, Frank Rayo, my car uh, current MS student, uh, Joma Mignosa, and we have a graduate assistant working with us. He's uh, basically new in the, a new MS student, Gab uh, Lorenzo. Now, how do I move this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I have a problem. Uh, na lang ako mag full screen. I can't seem to move it. Anyway, my consultants uh, and associates, and I believe they are panelists here, uh, John De Castro is our medical bioinformatician. Uh, yes. Please share your screen again. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, at least the PowerPoint. Share the PowerPoint. Uh, ah, sige, sige. Uh, I don't want to use the full screen. It seems to uh, be... Uh, yeah, okay. Ayan, yeah. Okay, okay right. na. All right. Uh, he's a balik scientist. And then physician uh, Jesus Emanuel Tavilleja is our epidemiologist. He's from the National Institute for Mental Health. Another physician, Salvador Kawili, is our Iniona informatician. He's a professor at UPTGH. And uh, Alexis Almacera is our senior research associate. He joins us from UP Miagao, no? and uh, we've been very busy the past three months actually uh, meeting with our consultants. Now, I. Okay, I list the website here, and these slides will be uh, available. I already sent it to. Uh, the Secretariat and Dr. Caro, so no need to copy uh, um, addresses. And uh, this research was supported by the alumni engineers of UP Biliman. It is part of the COVID-19 engineering projects uh, initiative of the College of Engineering. Uh, our Dean and Dr. De La Peña have been raising funds for this and organizing us. Now the other, um, the link I, be I provide below is uh, the community um, bulletin, 
the details that has descriptions of the 13, I believe, current projects under the COVID-19 engineering uh, initiative. And everything from respirator to ventilator to um, sanitizing um, protective uh, equipment. Now, uh, these are the latest from uh, GAB. We had our first case 30 January and uh, the first uh, recorded local spread March 6. The country, well, has been through varying levels or varying uh, quarantine regimes, and I guess it's on uh, varying levels of quarantine. As of June 10, 21,895 uh, infected. Now, uh, it's a bit hard, uh, it's a bit hard getting a handle on data. So, uh, the assumptions for the Philippines and uh, for the country and the uh, NCR. These are the initial conditions. And these have been the quarantine regimes, you know, uh, extended community quarantine, modified, general. And then um, finally, we've been playing around with our parameters, in particular, the removal rate gamma. And uh, now we are assuming a faster removal rate. And uh, it's detailed here below for the Philippines. Uh, I don't know why I get the survey. Okay, so our population, 108 million, NCR 13.8. And uh, initial conditions. Quarantines, because we have a parameter for, um, for well, a, a variable for quarantine, and then alpha epsilon, this concerns behavior. Beta, Sigma, Gamma are the traditional uh, pa parameters of SEIR. And uh, we're not projecting uh, peak infection. It's going to happen next year because it's very slow. I mean, I don't know if you notice. I mean, we think uh, the spread has been slow. And uh, these are the predictions for NCR. Well, much lower percentages, you can see. And while well, other researchers are expecting um, this to be with us for months. Then for Quezon City, now if you will notice in the peak infected, we have higher projections for the NCR and for Quezon City because, well, we seem to uh, be ground zero in the Philippines. There are a few incidences uh, outside of the NCR. And, uh, well, we go now to age stratification. It's a probability game. We're using data from Hubei, China. We treat the stratified incidences from Hubei as proxies for the infection probabilities for that age group, for each age group. And you will expect this will skew the Hubei distribution depending on the age distribution of the area under study. The true infection probabilities are not known and will probably be revealed uh, as cases build up. And uh, this is the data from Hubei. It's easier if uh, I stop sharing and uh, we go to uh, here, this is clearer now. So this is uh, coming from the Hubei data. And observe if they have 44, more than 44,000 cases. Observe the scatter of uh, confirmed cases. These are the infected, no? Uh, observe them uh, 0 to 9, 10 to 19. Very small, low probabilities for younger population. And uh, it increases as we get older. The peak in Hubei is around 50 to 59. Now, the earliest reports from Wuhan gave the median age for fatalities as uh, 73 or something. And that was when I thought, you know, uh, a young population like ours, median age 25, lower than the world median of 29, should have an advantage here in terms of fewer infections and fewer deaths. Because uh, I am treating this now as the pro infection probability as proxies for infection probability. And the other thing I'd like you to observe is that things ramp up at age 30. I, I'm highlighting it here. And we will see this happening even in uh, Quezon, in Quezon City and nationwide. You know, that uh, 30 to 39 
infectives ramp up. It's a peak, in fact, and also age uh, 50. So uh, that's, uh, that's a trend there when it comes to age. And uh, I'll go back to my slide. Now, uh, if you will look at the graph of, this is the probabilities from China, and these are the Quezon City distribution of cases uh, when this paper was written, definitely skewing right or uh, tilting to the left. And uh, we did this treatment, so we applied the Probability, the proxy probabilities from Hubei to the Quezon City age stratified population. This is what we got. And in our paper, we did the extreme case. Japan is blue, median age 48.6. Kenya is 20, median age, yeah, median age 20. That's a red for Kenya. Well, because Kenya is so young, you can see it's peaking at 30. But in Japan, with their aging population, the peak is at 59. And then, uh, okay, um, I will uh, be switching to the to the spreadsheet because it's easier. So this is the spreadsheet. So uh, this is the population. I have highlighted it in blue. Wait, wait, cancel. Here, I'm highlighting it in, uh, well, let's use a different color, uh, dark blue. So we're multiplying now uh, the age stratified uh, pop population for Quezon City by the proxy probabilities coming from Hubei. And, uh, well, this is a dot product calculation. We're multiplying the components. We're dotting these two vectors. Think of these as two vectors. We're, take, we're dotting them and calculating mathematical expectation. And from that, uh, we projected now the cases for Quezon City. And it's projecting a very high number, 9.95% here, I'm highlighting it. And this should, I, we realize now, this should be treated as, well, way high, probably 10 times what is observed, uh, what will be observed eventually. Interestingly, the death rate seems dead on because uh, there's also a probability for deaths from the Hubei data. The death, the death uh, projected is, uh, or the mortality rate, so deaths over cases, is 6.94%. And right now, I think it's a little over uh, 7%. So uh, this was the table we use for um, age stratified projections. It's a dot product for uh, those who are following the math. And uh, we are looking at the equations for the uh, classic SEIR model. And the, the modification for quarantine actually in, involves only the first term here. Put a Q there for quarantine. Basically, uh, we will uh, control the interaction between, so, the letters here are the susceptibles or those who can catch the disease, exposed but not yet infectious, infectious or infectives. So these are the people spreading the disease. And then removed, you get removed either you recover with permanent immunity, which is the assumption of this model, or you die. So uh, recovery with immunity or death. And uh, to, put a, to, control, uh, to put a quarantine control, just put a Q here. Or you may make it variable Q of T. So from uh, the classic model, we just added this. Now Q of T point four means the quarantine is 60% successful. If it's point two or a smaller number, it means it's 80% successful. So we're just 
limiting the contact between susceptibles and infected. Graduate students, here's a quiz. What does QT equals one mean? Can they answer? No, the participants can't answer. Anyway. Um, pwede naman po, if, uh, if they're brave enough to answer. Uh, yeah, I usually <laughs> offer prizes, but uh, I guess that works only in high school. Well, QT equals one means you did nothing. You get back to original model. And I will be uh, giving quizzes on how to turn off an effect. So QT equals one means no quarantine. You get back to the original model. And basically, uh, I will not show the spreadsheet. This is just a column in the spreadsheet. And we made it variable at the request of Dr. Sevilleja because, uh, you know, um, we were having problems uh, estimating when the quarantine took effect. And also, when it comes to testing, which is uh, you know, we rely only on confirmed or tested cases. There is a delay in the testing, and that is why Dr. Sevilleja wanted to be able to uh, set it uh, on a daily basis. And then uh, this is from the first report we submitted to the Quezon City Mayor. We tried putting a range, and well, the worksheet was overestimating it even then at 14.32, infectives at 14.32. And 9.95 was coming from the uh, age stratification. And uh, well, this number is quite close. The mortality rate, 7% of infectives. Uh, at that time, the WHO estimate was something like 5.6. China says 4. Italy said 12. Well, I was hoping we could keep it lower because of our advantage or my presumed advantage of a young population. By the way, uh, yeah, we sent this to the Quezon City Mayor and we're actually offering uh, services to all LGUs. So I will uh, show you the slide of um, our, our uh, website later. And also our sister website is an Augustine. Now, uh, this paper was written by Frank Rayo. Basically, he took uh, the theory of age stratification and put it in the, in the spreadsheet. And uh, well, this is his motivation. Uh, he sh sh he's seeing uh, skews uh, in the scatter around well, comparing uh, older and younger populations. And uh, this is a scatter we have now. So uh, the rightmost, I don't know if it's coming out in like brown, is Hubei, China. As you can see, it's skewed left. Light blue is easy to see. That's the NCR. And then red is Quezon City. I have been asked, is this bimodal? Well, it's looking bimodal right now. Uh, I think we still have two peaks, Gab, right? Uh, we've been monitoring this since... Uh, well, since we began working, March, April, May, this is from May 17. And you can see in uh, the Philippines, NCR and Quezon City, it's speaking at age 30 and age 50 in the NCR for Quezon City, age 60. Now, here's the advantage now. People in the 30-somethings, I expect to survive. The mortality rate uh, will increase as, um, as we get older. And we know, um, so it, will be inc it increases with age and uh, morbidities. And the biggest morbidity we've been reading is cardiovascular, diabetes, um, asthma. Now, uh, Frank wrote the equation this way. This is the uh, SEIR model with the Q parameter. This is the... Uh, term where you transition from uh, exposed to infected. So uh, you've been exposed to the virus. E means exposed to the virus, not yet infected. I, you're already infectious. So you can uh, spread the disease. And uh, well, this is now the two vectors, the population. Um, the stratified population is P. F is the probability vector. And we, were we will take this, uh, the, that product, U, 
and use it to dampen the infective germ. And uh, the details here, we're doing an F dot P. So component-wise multiplication, you come up with a scalar U, and you will damp use it to dampen the uh, infection term because uh, U is less than 1. And OK, nobody will answer. What happens when the F or probability vector is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1? Um, Mom, we can try that. Uh, if they would like to answer to the <laughs> participants, you just raise your hand. So you can raise your hand. There's a click button at the participant box. Anyone who'd like to answer? Okay. Well, yeah, only for students. So MS or PE, any student at any level. Yeah, I normally uh, give out. Uh, well, nobody's answering. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give you the answer either. But take a clue. Take a hint. You should be able to turn off age stratification, right? So uh, if the uh, probability vector is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, you just get the population, which will get normalized. So this is no age stratification. Now the results, the conclusion. First, this graph here demonstrates what we call flattening the curve. There's a faint red line. This is uh, without age stratification. There's the clear red line. So the peak is now lower. And also, what we observe is that if you uh, lower the maximum infectives, if the peak lowers, it also delays peaking. Now, remember, we interfered with the natural course of this epidemic. So we don't know what would have happened if we did not lock down. But what would have happened is it would have spread very quickly. Uh, a lot of infectives, well, uh, mort mortality rate we know, 7% in the Philippines. But now what we did is we're flattening the curve, we're interfering, and we pushed, um, we pushed back um, the peaking. We delayed the peaking. Now the details, so without, uh, without age stratification, uh, these were the earlier predictions with the those set of parameters, July 5.79 peak infectives. But uh, with age stratification, we pushed it to September, but only 3.4%. And we continued working on this model because uh, we're finding this uh, prediction still high, actually. Well, I think it's already the lowest in the country, but it's still high compared to confirmed date cases. Now, confirmed cases are probably underreported anyway, but I said, let's work on that. Now, this is the third and last paper we wrote, Protection After Quarantine, Insights from a QSIS IR Model with Nonlinear Incidence Rate. You, may, you see, uh, this was not my idea. Joma found this uh, himself because he was uh, doing a homework for our dynamical systems class. And he came up with an interesting uh, take on the uh, the classic SEIR model. And uh, it concerns, uh, this one concerns human behavior, how people behave. So uh, preventive and control measures widely used for COVID-19, hand hygiene, community quarantine, social distancing. However, we cannot uh, implement quarantine indefinitely. I mean, there have been concerns about our economy and uh, the like. Now we explore post-quarantine scenarios and introduce this alpha and epsilon, which mimics the effect of quarantine without quarantine. Well, back to the CIR model, I reproduce on the left, the classic model. And again, we will play with the exposure term, this first term. It's just beta S-I-N. We played with that, Frank already played with that. And Joma introduced this 1 plus alpha S over N and 1 plus epsilon I over N. So alpha goes with the susceptibles, epsilon goes with the infective. And what are these? That's the question. Okay, I have my quiz again. 
Well, what happens when alpha, before I tell you what they are, what happens when alpha epsilon goes zero? Okay, anyone who'd like to answer, please raise your hand. Anyone? No one. Four, five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Yeah. Well, Oh, may na grace po ng hand. Oh, may na grace. What happened? Ah, sige. Rajesh? Good morning, ma'am. It only tends to infinity, I think. Alpha is a denominator. Yeah. When it's uh, zero. Yeah, zero into zero, it is zero. Then uh, beta it's is another. It's one plus. It's yeah. one plus. Yeah, and then yeah. one plus. One. Uh, so what? So what is the denominator when alpha and epsilon are both zero? It is equal to one, ma'am. One. Yeah. So what's the effect of alpha equals epsilon equals zero? Uh, it will depend on that uh, numerator value. Well, uh, it's one down below. So does it affect the old yeah, one? Yeah. Yeah. No, so, it's not going to affect. Uh, no, old no one. effect, right? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is how you turn it off. Okay, so yes, it's very okay, easy to turn turn off. Just set alpha epsilon zero, no effect. Alpha is a combination of behavioral factors and disease resistance factors that will disrupt the transmission among susceptibles. That's the alpha here. Epsilon, again, a transmission of behavioral factors and disease resistance factors that will disrupt transmission from the infectants. And uh, well, we write down some more assumptions here, but the most interesting really uh, is a reinterpretation because uh, we um, Joma worked from the paper by Upadhyay, and Upadhyay has read Joma's paper, by the way. So we and he, you know, he gives very uh, little description. I think he's a mathematician. He gives very little description for alpha epsilon. So. Uh, with our epidemiologists, immunologists, and uh, immunoinformatician and medical bioinformatician, we reinterpreted alpha and epsilon. Alpha and epsilon are, like we said, uh, behavioral and health factors. So a small value, small values for alpha and epsilon is the highest exposure rate. People are crowding. We don't have or have inadequate PPEs or personal protection. No hand washing, touching the face. When it comes to disease resistance, we have low disease resistance. We have a natural predisposition for uh, infection, malnutrition, lack of exercise, pre-existing conditions. So this is bad. Small alpha, small epsilon is a bad situation. Big values for alpha and epsilon is a good situation. Notice it's a denominator. We have a low exposure rate. We have social distancing. We have appropriate protection. <coughs> we have proper hand hygiene. High disease resistance. We're, uh, we're in good health, uh, natural resistance. We have good nutrition, physical activity. We exercise and we have good overall health. And then uh, this is now the variations. Now, Small alpha, small epsilon is pink. This is a bad situation. Big alpha, big epsilon is in blue. This is a good situation. And then the in-between situations. And uh, I guess uh, this might be our contribution. We, in we interpreted alpha and epsilon from Yupadia High's very terse description of alpha and epsilon. Now, in most important from Jama's paper, uh, well, um, we skip sensitivity, elasticity analysis, we skip that. And uh, these are Joma's words. So release from quarantine should be strongly predicated on continuance and strict adherence to recommended social and health promoting behavior. Before you leave quarantine, make sure these are in place. We caution against hastening the pace of the pandemic or, you know, uh, the chicken pox party. It figure, yeah, you, you people are gonna get chicken pox, so we have parties for them, so the children will all get chicken pox. 
but uh, we caution against this because we fear it would overwhelm the health system and this may result in unnecessary death. Now, the latest from uh, the latest from San Agustin is that the Manila health system might already be in the danger level, but the Quezon City uh, facilities are okay. So uh, they monitor that. Okay, reproduction number, we skipped the discussion on that. So social distancing, hygiene, and contact tracing could be effective control strategies for minimizing the spread of the virus post-quarantine. And uh, this came out of an analysis of the reproduction number. Now, in disease-free equilibrium, the equilibrium points were equal to I equals zero. If we maximize alpha and epsilon, the good condition, it's equal to a 50% effective quarantine. Quarantine is still more effective. It, alpha epsilon does not give us the full effect of a quarantine, but uh, it's like 50% successful if we observe uh, proper measures. And uh, well, he tested it in Quezon City, decreased infections by 3.5, 3.45%. Iloilo 3.88%. But he got this unique result that Peking was pushed earlier. Uh, I still have not uh, I still have not found a good explanation for that. And uh, oh okay, I'm making good time because uh, I can tell you now about uh, our collaboration with the, the University of San Agustin in Iloilo. I'll bring you to their website and I can uh, show you their products. So the COVID-19 toolkit, uh, this is actually the brand name we use for the uh, engineering project. We are part of a COVID-19 toolkit. We are here, population modeling. If you click here, you will be brought to uh, actually our website. I hope it works. Yeah. Okay, so these are the things we've discussed already. QSSII, age stratification, and this should bring you to uh, our website. Can you see uh, modeling and dyna the dynamics of COVID-19? Yes, ma'am. So this is uh, out the website we maintained, maintained by the modeling team, that's me. And the reports, uh, these are the papers uh, that uh, were covered in this talk. You can click on them. They're in uh, Med Archive, Archive, wherever Archive. And these have been the reports. No? Now, uh, if we go back, are we back to the San Agustin website now, CFI? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, and, and free service also being offered by San Agustin actually is hospital resources. Click on this. They've been working on several models from uh, flu surge, started with flu surge. I think that's a US uh, product open source. They've been modifying it for COVID. And they can do this service. They can come up with a report. Although if I click on this, it will take long. I'd better show you uh, what I downloaded. Yeah, okay. So this is a hospital report. Uh, and they can, as an Agustin can do this for you. Uh, it's also a free service, so uh, they could uh, predict uh, hospital utilization, ICU capacity, non-ICU capacity. And uh, they are trying different models too at SEIR. So what we offer, uh, what our team offers is, uh, well, uh, the, the, the predictions uh, uh, we showed you and what they offer, among other things, is this, a hospitalization hospital utilization report no? and so this is for LGU and uh, just like us they also uh, 
look at the peak and this is for Iloilo. And uh, you can meet them here in about. They're all present, I believe. Uh, Doctor 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 Pia Zamora, Adam uh, Professor Adam Rico, and uh, their software developer uh, Nelo Aguila. And uh, this is John, our consultant, uh, our medical bioinformatician. He's the director of this center. And. I do believe, um, what can you see now? Can you see my, uh, okay, I will go back to sharing. I'm already at the end of my slide anyway. Okay, good time. So that was, uh, that's the address for uh, the Center for uh, Informatics. And our references, you may download our papers, uh, at that website that I showed you. Okay, I'm done. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Bongolan, Dr. Bongolan. So, uh, uh, for our participants, if you have any questions, you may uh, put that in the question and answer the Q&A box. Uh, please indicate your name and also your institution and uh, if you want to voice speak out the uh, question orally you may just raise your hand and then we will uh, give you the time to voice out your questions okay before we go to the questions um, a reminder to the participants we provide with provide participants with e-certificates for the webinars uh, provided that uh, the participant first registers as a member of the Computing Society of the Philippines. Okay, so is there any question? I have a question, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yung uh, regarding the, the model, yeah. can we say that we are mimicking what happened in Yubei, China, here in Quezon City. Are we close to what happened there with respect to the age stratification? Well, uh, we have a different age stratification. Mm -hmm. So what I expect to happen is we will do better. We're a young country. That, that's the theory I'm putting forward. No? We have our median age is 25 point something, lower than the world's median. We will do better in terms of fewer infections, fewer deaths. So, God, I hope we don't mimic what happened in Dubai. And Italy, well, Italy is the oldest population in Europe, median age 48. Oh, God, I, I hope we will not mimic Italy. And I think we are not. Uh, is, is that the question, uh, Maris? Yeah. Okay, yes, ma'am. So that's uh, at least that's a good news for us. Yes, yes, yes. It's good news for us. And uh, that is why I thought of the age stratification. It's actually an advantage now to be young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other questions, uh, I'll bring it to, uh, I'll, I'll bring it. Can you see the slides? We're back to the slides, right? Yes, ma'am. I well, only have a question here from. Yeah, okay, okay. From Mr. Renish Simon or Renish yes. Simon. Right, yes. With the current information we have and the developed model, what would be your opinion with the current move of the Philippine government in the context of quarantine measures? Uh, what is the current move now? So, uh, right I now, <laughs> I think there's a shuffle between ECQ, GCQ, MGCQ. It's a shuffle. Yeah, well, for our modeling, it's a nightmare. But we've made it easy because you touch the queue, right? No quarantine mm -hmm. is one. Successful quarantine is a small number. Well, you know, uh, that's the thing. Um, it, it's hard to discuss policy if you're a modeler mm -hmm. because there are other things that come into play like the economic uh, repercussions, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, um, the observed uh, 
infection uh, infections happening uh, in the country and in the NCR are small. We have few cases, which is good. Now, will we survive if we leave quarantine? That was uh, what Joma was trying to answer. Well, we could protect ourselves by with the learnings, you know. Now, yeah, I do not know as to the government shuffle. It's a bit hard for me to say. Mm -hmm. All I know is that uh, younger people will most likely survive. So notice that the the scatter of uh, incidences in NCR and Quezon City seems to be bimodal. 30s has a lot of people there, 50s and 60s. But uh, it's definitely skewing less. Mm -hmm. And the younger people will most likely survive it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's what I'm hoping will happen. So with respect to that, so you said that uh, we try to, uh, in a way, if we leave the quarantine, at least we provide some measures wherein we try to mimic quarantine. Right, right. That's with the alpha and the epsilon. Yeah. And with the age stratification where we have a young population and we have better chances of surviving. Uh, right. do, you do you think that it's a good move for government to uh, slightly ease restrictions on schooling, for example, for the young people, as long as they observe this um, uh, quarantine measures? Well, uh, I don't know. What is the experience in other countries? I think Korea lifted it, kids went back to school, and then they felt they had to impose quarantine again. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit hard, you know, to... Uh, well, definitely, once quarantine was lifted, we expect a surge of cases. That should not surprise us. Mm -hmm. Right? Because um, um, we, like I said, we um, interfered with the course of this uh, epidemic. So uh, it was kept, things were kept artificially low with a quarantine. If you lift it, well, there'll be a surge of cases. Hopefully a surge that uh, will be, we will be able to handle. Mm -hmm. Which was the, the purpose of the, the quarantine, all the uh, quarantine uh, regimes anyway, to uh, flatten this curve and, you know, buy us time by pushing the peaking. And, that is clear in this graph. Uh, this is Frank's graph. No? So that used to be the peak. It got flattened. This used to be the peaking time. Got pushed back. So mm -hmm. those are the uh, you know effects that we expect. But okay. uh, I, I leave that to uh, I leave that to policy uh, makers. They can ask us if we want. But all I can do for them is give them my new projections. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have a question from Miss yes, Mary please. Jane Isidario. Yes, please. So what's the basis of the model limited to age only? Or did you consider other factors? Well, yeah, it was only age. So right now, uh, we played around with the quarantine parameter, the Q, the age stratification, we, because I thought that, you know, it's a probability game that I expected to win. And I think I am winning. Mm -hmm. And then the alpha epsilon, <clears throat> yeah, that is like an exploration in uh, in um, the infection rate, nonlinear. And then it also tells us about our what behavior we can do, what we can do for, uh, what were the recommendations there. Uh, we should be watching our health. Okay, so the behavior things, no crowding. Uh, social distancing, protection, hand hygiene. And then we can build our resistance. So these are healthy, our health li li lifestyle or something, diet, mm -hmm. exercise, whatever we, we do for good health. You know? so, and so these were the only ones uh, we've considered so far. Modeling continues. Uh, Dr. Almacera, I, I think he is here. He is working on uh, mod modifying uh, SEIR with contact tracing. Uh, 
the asymptomatic, uh, un undetected cases, and the like. Uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Kawili is here. Actually, um, we have begun playing around with the parameters. Uh, the low numbers I was able to give you uh, at the very beginning, Gab came up with this. That's because uh, we played around with uh, beta is lower now, 1.5, because the early reports, the early modeling for Wuhan, beta was three. But somehow, mm -hmm. uh, we were able to uh, I mean, bring it down to 1.5 incubation rate, 0.2 removal rate, uh, 0.5 fast removal. Mm -hmm. And we are able to get lower numbers. Well, of course, I am happy with lower numbers, but maybe you will not be happy that it will be with us for months, more than a year in the future in the Philippines. Quezon City, where uh, I personally am located, is some months from now to April 2021. But the mm. good news is it's very small already. These are the lowest predictions uh, I have come across for this country. Mm -hmm. Um, in your in this table that you are showing, we see this in the input. You have is this alpha over epsilon? Uh, no, that's alpha epsilon. Alpha uh, epsilon. Yeah, so. yeah. It's not over. Uh, okay, sorry. The, the best behavior, alpha is one, epsilon is one. Uh, okay. uh, that's the best behavior. And so, these assumptions are best behavior assumptions. Yeah, you I have follow. to be on your best behavior to get this. Mm -hmm. And we have a follow-up question on the yes, alpha please. and epsilon by Mr. Yeah, Kerry okay. Hiponia. Yeah, okay. How, do you, how can you come up with the values of the alpha and epsilons? Since depending, yeah. is it depends on a combination on the scenarios like social distance. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, uh, well, here's the, okay, here's the alpha epsilon, right? And here's the meaning of the alpha epsilon. Now, uh, the maximum number, well, I already asked the quiz alpha zero, epsilon zero, no effect, mm -hmm. original model. The highest number, but from Upadhyay High is, one one alpha one epsilon one that's the highest number allowed in the original paper of Upadhyaya high and um when it comes to the spreadsheet they're just they're just columns just like the just like the um, let me see if i can show you the spreadsheet mm -hmm. okay i think i can show it to you Okay, here is the spreadsheet. Um, I just uh, got something we're playing around with. Now, yeah, it, it's just an additional column. No? So this is Q quarantine, that's the alpha, the epsilon. And you set it. Like we said, zero, zero, no, no social distancing even at home. No quarantine. Mm -hmm. And then you... you and the, typically, these are set by uh, our epidemiologists. Now, 1-1 one, one is best behavior. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might say this is an optimistic projection because we're assuming everybody will behave. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if that is true. I, I'm hoping it's largely true. But you know that that's a guess now on, uh, on human behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's how it is set. It is just a column in the worksheet. Yes, Mom, a follow up here also. Yeah, please, please. Uh, have you determined what values of alpha and epsilon currently is currently validated by real data? Well, uh, I'll go back to uh, yeah, I'll go back to the table here the table of scenarios and the, okay, I'll share this screen. Yeah, well, because you see, there are so many things uh, you can touch, no? Mm -hmm. um, this was the last, the last uh, thing we did actually was touch the parameters because these are assumed to be properties of the virus. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the last thing we touched to get this 
observed infection rate. It's very low. Mm -hmm. now, I mean, uh, you can look at the, the other modeling teams that get 10%, 14%. It's very high. And, uh, well, you can set it. And I guess uh, right now this particular experiment is assumes best behavior, 1-1. One, one. So we have to continue our social distancing, our hand washing, and uh, mm -hmm. well, wearing masks if you are uh, if you have symptoms. But now people wear masks <clears throat> even if they do not have symptoms. Well, at least you don't touch your face if you have that mask. So mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to continue those. Okay. Uh, John De Castro is raising his hand. I think. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Salamat. Uh, thank you, uh, Pearl, Jimmy, and Marik for uh, having us dito sa uh, webinar na to. Uh, I just wanted to, um, I guess, add to the discussion on Alpha and Epsilon. And we've been talking about this constantly in our discussion. And I think yesterday, only yesterday, we started uh, thinking about how we could estimate Alpha and Epsilon. No? Uh, and we talked about you know, using AI and also maybe observing image, images of crowds, how many people are wearing masks in a crowd. So you can get uh, you know, a, a, a percentage of... Uh, how many people are wearing masks. So you can like peg the alpha and epsilon to those types of things and create a composite score for uh, mask wearing, hand washing, like how many people go to the bathroom and wash their hands or how many institutions before you get inside, you know, have hand washing stations. So these are uh, surrogates in estimating alpha and epsilon in the public. So we're not, we're not there yet. We don't have any sources of data for that. But I think... Um, you know, uh, Dr. Badong suggested that if we look at uh, CCTV uh, footages, for example, and we can, you know, uh, uh, look at how many people are passing by and how many of them are wearing masks and how many are not wearing masks. So these are surrogate measures for alpha and epsilon. So you can extend that through uh, the, uh, all the descriptions of what alpha and epsilon are and create a composite score. And I think we might be able to estimate that at some point in time. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. De Castro. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's an opportunity actually. That's open uh, because we know there are facial recognitions, right? So, uh, well, you can recognize who has a mask. The one who looks like a mummy can have facial recognition mm -hmm. and uh, other monitoring uh, things. And then, yeah, estimating uh, densities of the crowd because right now we're not allowing more than ten. So things like that crowd density estimation, which could also be uh, automated. Okay. Uh, one question. Uh, did you also consider gender as a factor in the stratification? No, no, no. Actually, uh, many reports are gender. Well, we know that this disease, this COVID-19, seems, uh, uh, seems to discriminate against, against males. Mm -hmm. Now, the comorbidities, well, the physicians are here. You could ask them about uh, the incident of, say, cardiovascular disease. Is it bias against the male? But, you know, we have, that is uh, something, that is a refinement we can do, of course, to uh, have uh, some stratifications by gender. Because uh, actually more than gender, we, were, we have been discussing doing this for the comorbidities. Mm -hmm. Like cardiovascular, what percentage, uh, what percentage risk do you have? You know, and uh, we have been discussing uh, refining this model based on comorbidities. Although uh, right now, <clears throat> age is a good proxy for comorbidities because the mm -hmm. the cardiovascular, the diabetes, and the other uh, existing conditions come in as people age. So uh, that is used um, okay. like a proxy. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, is there any more question coming from the participants? Okay. So I think uh, all questions have been answered. So do you have any uh, final comments, Mom, Dr. Bongolan? Well, uh or any uh, word of advice for our participants on how to 
achieve that ideal alpha and epsilon equals yeah yeah <laughs> how to achieve uh, well um know your i i, I think uh, first keep yourself informed okay mm -hmm. and uh try to fight fake news mm -hmm. yeah that's right? good don't keep on uh, I, I don't know there is still this belief about temperatures no uh the who has been saying temperatures no just because we're in the tropics we're being protected i don't think so i think what's protecting the philippines is its young population mm -hmm. and then uh yeah i mean for a very long time people thought the virus was airborne although the who website and please trust the Trust the official website. The WHO website have been saying it is not airborne. In fact, mm -hmm. they flat out said, stop wearing masks. Stop wasting masks. But um, one good thing about wearing a mask is you don't touch your face. Yeah. And that's where you'll get the infection. If you touch your face before you wash your hands. But uh, yeah, what, uh, what the one good thing the public can do is to stop spreading fake news. Uh, mm -hmm. They were... I don't know if anybody drank Clorox. Good God, don't drink Clorox. Uh, <laughs> those are the things I was reading. No, you can drink lemon juice, but I don't know. I mean, that gives you vitamin C, but I don't know if that protects you from COVID once it's inside you. It's vitamin C. That's what it is. So you drink lemon juice, go ahead. But um, yeah, don't drink any <laughs> any questionable substance now. Okay. Are there other comments from the other panelists and co-researchers? Yeah, I have. Um, can I? Can I? Um, yeah, contribute. Yeah. So this uh, uh, was in. Uh, I think in order for us to have a more a better model or modeling. Uh, we should engage ourselves with other um, specialties or other, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for the dog, other experts. Uh, hold on, I have to bring him out. <laughs> Maybe somebody else. Ako, ako na lang, ano, M, I wanted to reiterate, actually not reiterate, I, I put something on the, uh, on the panel, no, uh, on the chat, that uh, we actually welcome uh, volunteer modelers. So if you are, you know, itching uh, to try out data science with us and also modeling with us. Uh, we've been calling for models for a while, but, you know, uh, we get some really interesting uh, volunteers. So, and they've been uh, working really hard. So this is why we have that COVID toolkit. That's largely their, uh, their work. So, uh, but otherwise, uh, we welcome uh, additional volunteers who may be able to work on other LGU data. Uh, so we've done Quezon City and Iloilo. Uh, maybe we, uh, you can help us to Cebu, uh, you know, Davao, and the other, uh, you know, LGU. So uh, please uh, contact Dr. Bongolan for that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you well, very yeah. much. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, yeah, actually, um, it was hard during uh, the epidemic finding uh, finding students. You know? So, uh, but. I think our students responded in other ways no? because uh, they volunteered in other ways. But yeah, um, we could do with the <coughs> volunteers or better yet, uh, enroll in the, <laughs> take a master's in computer science with a specialization in uh, scientific computing. Mm -hmm. And you, you can do this. We have some raised hands from oh, the yeah. attendees. Uh, at, Let's check if they have some questions. Mr. Salvador Eugenio Kawili. Dr. Kawili, yeah. He's a panelist. He should be a panelist. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, am I listed as a panelist? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I've been here since the start of the talk. Thank you. Uh, so one thing that I would encourage people to also try thinking is like, try to revisit the notion of So you, your but mic is off. off. No, no, I, I've been promoted, I think, to panelist or something. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, yeah. So actually, 
I think that uh, one interesting exercise that many or all of us can try to do is like uh, try to revisit the notion of uh, Fermi problems. So Fermi problems are uh, these problems that uh, can be solved or these are like problems that are supposed to be solved with very little if any available data. So they're named after Enrico Fermi, the um, uh, famous physicist who, uh, according to one anecdote, was able to estimate the uh, initial amount of energy, uh, the, the amount of energy released from the uh, initial test of the, of the atomic bomb by dropping a piece of paper and seeing how far it uh, moved horizontally, you know. And then within, like, I think a factor of two, he was able to estimate just based on some theoretical consideration. So that's another line of uh, investigation that we're trying. So, so that eventually we'd be able to have pieces of data plugged into a bigger framework. It's basically some kind of glorified guesstimation game. But uh, I, I think that if enough of us do it, and we have different models, not of, none of which are actually identical, we'll probably be able to come up with some kind of consensus. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think Dr. De Castro may have mentioned this earlier. So it's like having multiple models, multiple alternative models that uh, can give us some kind of consensus without necessarily relying on any particular model, because we know that all models are wrong, right? So, but if we have enough models, uh, pointing in the same direction. It gives us more confidence to say that, well, maybe that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Uh, Miss May Grace Matiliano. May Grace Matiliano. Okay, so uh, let's go to they can uh, Miss. Type, perhaps they can type uh, something in chat. Yeah. Uh, Miss Mia Bilyarika, do you have uh, comments or questions? Mia Bilyarika. Okay, and... Uh, Okay, so I think... Uh, Baka kailangan silang i-unmute. Naka-mute sila eh. Naka-unmute na po sila. I already allowed them to talk. I can see, Ms. Isidario, can we use this model to other studies? Well, you know, uh, I, yeah, that's the innovation. No? So uh, I've been playing with the SAIR. Uh, SAI model is... Uh, I don't know, the flu pandemic uh, in London, uh, turn of the century, last century, more than 100 years old. Now, um, they, um, at, at uh, San Agustin, they started with the flu surge, something for flu, and they're trying to uh, retool it for COVID. You know? So it's just really setting the parameters. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's, a, what, that's what I'm saying here. Can we use this model to other studies? Well, go ahead and, uh, well, I'll encourage you if you're a modeler to just go ahead and play with the, the equation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are there any other questions or reactions coming from the attendees or the panelists? Yeah, so may, not, may not, I now continue my story oh, yeah, no, for okay. earlier. Yeah. yeah, so what I learned from this experience of collaboration uh, between Doc, Dr. Mongolan, Dr. De Castro, and Dr. Kawili is that a multidisciplinary approach is really uh, needed in order for the model to be more, uh, if, be better to have a better model because uh, of course we have our own expertise and we can read uh, things basic things we know all basic math we know basic health but of course a mastery of the subject and experience is also uh, um, important and this contributes to different interpretations or insights of the different parameters so that's why it's really important to have a collaborative effect uh, effort when doing modeling. So biologists, social scientists, computer scientists, mathematicians, 
these are all important. Mm -hmm. So I think we have uh, people here who are interested in getting your contact details for possible collaboration. So how can they avail of your contact details? Well, uh, this this slides uh, this slides will be uh, are available. Uh, do I have my? Okay, I will type out uh, I'll type it out here. Kongolan at up. Dot edu dot ph. Okay, that's very. Uh, good. That's my email. But I have made uh, I have made these slides available, no? And I think Dr. Caro said it will be in the YouTube or what? Mm -hmm. But yeah, contact me. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you all the. I, I, that's why I typed. I, I wrote out the website addresses. You can see there. If you want any particular paper, you can download it there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, uh, Dr. De Castro provided his email in the chat box for the information of the panelists, uh, for, of the attendees. Oh, okay, good, good. Can we use less number of controls, more number of case, in uh, case controls? Can we use study? less number of controls? Perhaps this will refer to the parameters. Ah, more number. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you know, you know. As uh, <laughs> as Doctor Sevilleja has pointed out, uh, it's good to take an interdisciplinary approach. And uh, you will see that, uh, well, yeah, different people view these things differently. Doctor Kawili, yeah, the the doctors of medicine are actually uh, sort of a, I've been playing around with beta, sigma, gamma, because, you know, they have a more nuanced understanding, like beta, the transmission rate. They will tell you it's not really uh, an exclusive, exclusively a property of the virus. It's a property of the virus meeting the host. So, uh, you know, I get the, uh, I, I, I get the, uh, busy uh, listening to them, to the doctors. Now, less parameters, well, you know what? I, and then Joma added his alpha epsilon, and then, uh, well, Frank added his age stratification. So those are all added things to the model. Huh? So uh, now um, I think the question is, yeah, can we have less parameters and just data fit something? But you know, mm, you cannot avoid putting parameters when you model, whether they're the original parameters or added parameters. Well, some people are trying to make predictions just from the data. No? I mean, uh, that would be the data mining. But, uh, well, uh, this is modeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a comment from Mr. Jesus Emmanuel Sevilleja one of our panelists. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I need to lower my hand. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. I, I just, uh, I just uh, um, shared my email if in case uh, people want to uh, have further questions or want to collaborate. Thank you. Okay. Actually, and also uh, Mr. Yeah, Almasera no. shared his email also. Yes. So um, if you're um, if you're interested in uh, no, um, working with us, then you can you can also contact me. I have provided my email address. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Americ, uh, I wanted to address that uh, you know can we use uh, smaller num uh, smaller numbers of parameters? I think there are ways to short circuit the parameter. So we've been discussing this a lot as well. Short circuiting meaning you know if we know that the contribution of alpha and epsilon is zero or one. Di madalina, no? mm -hmm. And quarantine, for example, when you lift the quarantine, that means you, you set the Q to 1. So you go back to the initial model as Doc, Doc Pearl. Ganun din ang beta. You know, if we don't touch beta, most of the time we weren't touching beta, but it looks like right. uh, you know, it needs to be varied as well. So mm -hmm. uh, there are definitely ways to like lower the number of, uh, uh, of parameters depending on the situation. It just happens that medyo complicated itong itong COVID pandemic na ito and we've had to really gather uh, you know uh, knowledge from 
<laughs> from different uh, from different areas and interpret uh, these parameters many in many different ways. So thanks to the leadership of Dr. Bongol, <laughs> who's been mm -hmm. who's been like the you know our uh, you know our modeler in chief, and you know her students are excellent, you know, in finding ways to like uh, help. Uh, Thank with the you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think they're listening. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Uh, any questions, comments? Uh, one last note lang po, Dr. Bongolan. Yes, the epicenter seemed to shift from Quezon City to Cebu. Cebu City. Wow, yeah, we, we have, we have this, to start uh, facing uh, Cebu now. Mm -hmm. Do you have some studies already that being made on this uh, age stratification in Cebu? Uh, John, do we already... Uh, have anything for Cebu? No, we have not looked. But yeah, uh, uh, we we do. We actually have. Uh, we're following the hospital utilization in Region Seven. Uh, mm -hmm. So far, that's what we have. Um, the, the the things that we're uh, of course that affects uh, hospitalization are like health disparities. You know, the poor people cannot afford to get hospitalized. So some of the figures we're seeing are not necessarily representative. So there's a lot of things that we can do to model. Uh, uh, hospital utilization more accurately. But mm -hmm. uh, I think some of our students may be starting on uh, on uh, modeling uh, using Cebu data. So, kung wala pa tayong model pearl, maybe it's time to like get new volunteers no, from this group. So, anybody interested in helping to model Cebu are welcome. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just showing my face just so you know I have your uh, I, I usually okay. hide my face. Uh, oh, there's Dr. Sevilla. Uh, now I hide my face again. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Dr. Kawili is uh, in P -E PPE. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just got back to the office because we were banned for two days because somebody in the next building tested positive. So, so uh, ah, you're in PGH yeah. right now. Ah. No, no, I, I'm actually not with PGH. I'm with the College of Medicine, so I'm with the biochemistry department of ah, the College I, of Medicine. I, I, yes, so so we're uh, we're at the periphery. We're we're closer to the mall than to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, I was about to say, can you share the the hospital utilization for Cebu. I've stopped sharing. Uh, can sure, the panel uh, share? Yeah. yeah, sure, I can do that. If you allow me to share, I'll, I'll go ahead and-, and, and uh, Maybe we have the time, uh, no, Yes, Dr. I think Eric? we still have a few. Yes, we, we still yes, have time. Yeah, that's so why I kept uh, my clock short. So, uh, okay. So we have um, done something for Cebu. We could uh, put Gab on it. Uh, oops. Dali lang <laughs> yung Facebook ko nakita. Facebook. So makikita niyo si Jimmy doon sa aking Facebook. <laughs> so okay, I wanted to show you. This is our toolkit. So a uh, Pearl actually uh, showed uh, uh, the things that are part of our toolkit. No? So we have data. Uh, so this is part of the PPE data that we work with with Paase. Uh, but but uh, let me take a look at our... Ano, uh, ito yung data. So I'm clicking the data so it, it should load up any moment now. <laughs> Yan. So ito. I wonder if you see it so you can see that we have uh, uh, the entire data set, the DOH data drop. So you can go there and explore it. Uh, Dr. Pia has uh, Pia Zamora uh, compiled data for Region uh, 6. Uh, Dominic uh, is one of our volunteer students. Uh, he is compiling data for the hospital utilization. So I'm going to click this and I'll show you uh, what he's done. Uh, sandali, no? So it goes to a Google Sheet. Uh, so yung mga visualizations namin sometimes go to a Google Sheet. Sometimes uh, goes yeah, back good. to our uh, visualizations. Yeah, uh, we were looking at them yesterday. We had a meeting yesterday. So I know they're doing it for several people. Oops. Well, I am sad to hear that, well, that... Uh, the epicenter has shifted to Cebu. I mean, we have not been watching uh, Cebu. We have been watching the NCR. But yeah, I mean, uh... ayan, no man, but so, na. So, lang na to load. Yeah, <laughs> no, okay. Medyo mababag. <laughs> yeah, I noticed <laughs> that uh, I think uh, okay. our servers are a bit overworked. But you can see. And this was what I was. we were looking at yesterday. That's why... And we fear that the Manila hospital might be already in the danger zone in I, terms uh, of, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, getting. Let me just show Cebu. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, let me just show some to, yeah, to your yeah, right, dito. No? So you can compare, tingnan mo, to, to your left is Western Visayas. So that's Iloilo and, you know, Negros, Bacolod. So uh, to the right is Region 7, which is Cebu, uh, Negros Oriental, I think Bohol. So tingnan nyo yung hospital, nandun na sila sa may, uh, you know, above the green line, which is 30%. Mm -hmm. So kung compare mo sila sa, sa West Visayas, sa Kaliwa, eh, mas maganda yung uh, hospital utilization sa West Visayas. And the gray bars is actually the submission rate. So kung mm -hmm. matas yung submission rate, so it goes up to 100%, that's good. That's very good data. Pero kung mababa yung submission rate, which is dito kunyari dun sa left side ng, 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 ano, no, ng, uh, ng graph, uh, kita mo yung gray bars, eh, mababa, ah, hindi perfect yung submission rate ng mga hospitals. But as you go to the right, gumaganda yung submission rate nila. So mas nagiging accurate yung uh, uh, itong uh, hospital utilization. But again, uh, we were thinking that these hospital utilizations, they come from the DOH collect, data collect app. And uh, we're following them on a daily basis. Uh, Dominic is doing this. Uh, and uh, ano, uh, ang ganda, at least nakikita natin, oh, puno na bang hospital? Pwede pa ba akong magpa-hospital? Magpa so it's still looking good in Western Visayas, but in uh, Central Visayas, nasa middle range na sila. Kaya pa ng capacity nila, pero uh, you know, when you get to the danger zone, baka yun yung time na kailangan na nilang mag-augment mag ng Capacity. So we have that for the different regions, but I'll show you the NCR ones okay, since NCR. Uh, Pearl mentioned that. So ito yung uh, so the first one is Manila. So you can see Manila is already quite uh, nandun na siya sa me. Oversubscribed. Yeah. Oh. oh. Tapos uh, underneath that second district is Quezon City, which is still Correct. good. And then uh, we can go down further. Uh, third district is like uh, Navotas, Malabon. So, mm -hmm. medyo kumaganda. Kahit pa paano, ICU beds nila is actually below. So, ibig sabihin ng mga cases nila, eh, medyo hindi kailangan ng ICU. Yeah. Tapos, uh, this is 4th District, Las Piñas, Paranaque, somewhere in the south. So, they're also in the middle range. So, right now, NCR is clearly the epicenter. So, malapit na sila dun sa danger zone. So, okay. yeah. So, we even have uh, one moment. Let me show you something else that is quite interesting. Thank you, um, for explaining. This one, Mr. Yeah, Sibet. this yeah, this one is this model is developed. Uh, this one is the Quezon City uh, visualization. Uh, this is compiled by high school student, Miss Isa Isip, Isabel East. Uh, so so nag nagpapakita ba? Can you see it? Oh, I'm not seeing it. No, ah, may, ito pala, may your assigned in. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, tinanggal ko na. So to uh, we came to uh, uh, so she's been following the case uh, data uh, sa barangay level no so uh, may tumawag sa akin na kaibigan ko who has a dental office and she asked me kung magbubukas ba siya or hindi sabi ko nasan ba yung dental office mo tingnan mo kung saang barangay sa Quezon City kung maraming cases kung maraming cases wag ka na magbukas <laughs> well i was just joking of course she can do alpha and epsilon meaning uh, you know she can uh, protect herself and her uh, you know her patients maybe well maybe not her patients because they have to open their mouths no but uh, she can protect her health workers by following strict alpha and epsilon no equals 1 so yun ang sabi ko sa kanya so sandali, meron pang meron pa tayong isang visualization dito eh. pero uh, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, maybe mabagal yung pagload sa akin. Ito yung Quezon City, oh. So you can see yung visualizations. These were done by Isa and Jonathan Rico. So you can see where the cases are in uh, in Quezon City in in our visualization. So so maganda yung uh, I mean, these are just compiled from the Quezon City Facebook data. Kasi, you know, kung wala tayong disaggregated data from the DOH data drop, then okay, we have to we have to figure out where we can get that data. So ito nga, ang ganda. Yeah, as part of the engineering initiative, Dr. Blanco has uh, similar maps for Quezon City, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah, yeah. just so, detailed, I think. Kasi barangay, right. Level one. right. So marami pa. You can explore our data drop if you like. And this one has a lot more data. This is the data from DOH. Uh, and and uh, and daming complaints dun sa data for DOH uh, recently. No, and dami daw mali mali. 
but somehow we're able to clean it up uh, and are able to present uh, the data you know in a in a cleaned up manner this is uh, the work of Nello uh, Nello Aguila and Gie uh, Gie Kwon she's a Korean uh, well she's a Filipino Korean she lived in Iloilo uh, but she's actually a stu an MPH student from Yale who got stuck in Iloilo uh, during the lockdown so she volunteered with us and now she's helping us do the data visualizations for our cases doing cases age per group tapos uh, cases age per health status we also have gender somebody asked about gender earlier yeah yeah so you can look at uh, the gender disparity so for example in maybe in the the diet i don't know kung makikita natin ito no so we'll do it uh, interactive pa tong ano natin no tong visualization natin so you can say look at the severe cases so tingnan mo may gender disparity tapos merong recovered pareho lang mild uh, halos pareho lang uh, merong counting differences yung mga namatay mas maraming males kaysa females right. so ayun i think it's yun the yung... comorbidity i, I mean uh, well, the doctors can tell you uh, m uh, badong dr kawili dr uh, Sevilla, huh? i think it's the comorbidity yeah right. uh, we were asked uh, if we can program this in no and Okay, math graduate students, computer science graduate students, go ahead. Right? You're asking, did I consider other things? You go ahead and consider it. Ayan, they have the data on gender. Split. Split the split the compartment. So right now we have S-E-I-R. Split it into gender. Try it. Right. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. No, you can, you can yung... email me. Yeah. yeah, here's our testing data as well. So, makikita nyo dito yung testing data natin. So, here we are also following it on a daily basis so you can see na, you know, how many tested individuals and how many daily cases. So, grabe, we are actually going up no, from originally 872 on, on 630. I just saw this now. So, ang dami pala ng increase natin. nag increase tayo without the requisite increase in being a surge. So this is not good. So and we follow it on a daily basis. So people can go to our site. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you for this. Um, I think we can access this website, no? Uh, this is oh, usacfi.net. Okay. So let me let me type that in the okay. chat. So yeah, males can are see. more exposed because they need to work. They want the link. Ah, okay. You all right? Yeah. Well. Uh, that's why I made my slides available, no? So the CFI ah, website right. is there. My website is there. My Facebook website is there. No? Mm -hmm. But go ahead, uh, send your email. So uh, you already have my email. Mails are more exposed. Well, Miss De Isidario, if you want to uh, split the compartments of SEIR gender-wise, go ahead. Right, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. can help you. Dr. Almosera is doing just that. He can help you. Okay. Ito pala, uh, Pearl, when you were showing us, uh, it wasn't showing. So I just wanted to show our team. <laughs> Dr. Zamora, Jonathan. And yeah, hindi nakita. And that's sad. And this is me <laughs> at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> so uh, feel free to explore our site and you can contact us as well if you like. And uh, we're always uh, in touch with uh, Dr. Uh, with Dr. Pearl, thank you, Pearl, for uh, showing our uh, showing our site as well, uh, yeah, well along uh, with your your website. So we appreciate yeah. that. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, this um, descriptive uh, statistics that we have seen, and uh, we still cling to the hope that we are doing better this time around as we deal with the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Bongolan, thank you. for your thank you. talk. And uh, thank you for all the panelists. And uh, just a matter for uh, announcing our next talk. Yes. So uh, we will have our webinar for next week. Our speaker is Mr. Hearn Sermida and Mr. Paolo Balinas from Microsoft Philippines, and this will be followed by a talk by Dr. Noel Feria from ah, UP Diliman. So uh, we encourage you to also uh, uh, fill up this, this survey, the poll, 
and uh, so that we get feedback from our participants. So again, uh, we would like to thank Dr. Pearl Bongolan for your thank very you. informative talk and helpful talk. And we hope that we come up with this uh, more dynamic models that will uh, better model our uh, situation right now and give us with uh, advice or how we can go about with uh, implementing quarantine measures without really the quarantine. Mm -hmm. So with this, we would end our webinar for this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for thank your you, thank you. participation. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.